Hi, I'm Zero, and this is Only Nice Things, the show that punishes negative opinions with alcohol. Today we're going to talk about Long Day's Journey Into Night. Long Day's Journey Into Night is a story of a man named Luo Hong Wu who travels back to his hometown Kali after the death of his father. After finding a picture, he's reminded of a woman he once knew and embarks on a quest to see her again. The film jumps back and forth between his present and past experiences, ultimately taking us into a one hour long camera take of a dream journey to find his long lost lover. Now let's say some nice things about this film. Long Day's Journey Into Night is shot beautifully and deliberately in a way to make the viewer feel like they're in a dream. I love the neo-noir look that director B. Gan is showing off, especially later when we get to see the neon lights pierce the dark sky. When I watched this a second time, there were little details I began to notice, and it felt like I was being rewarded for giving this complex story another go. The hour-long one-take camera shot is technically impressive, as we get to follow Luo from out of a mine by motorbike, slowly down a cable lift, and then high above the town as we get to experience the fantasy of flying. This is actually one of the few exceptions where I feel that 3D was warranted, as the viewer takes a cue from Luo to put on their pair. The post-rendered 3D effect actually works in the movie's favor, as it has a feeling of unrealness without looking too digital. And this all adds to the lucid dream state that we're slowly sinking into with the main character. That's it for the Only Nice Things portion of this show. If you're sensitive to negative comments or criticisms, you'll probably just want to leave now. Otherwise, stay tuned for the drinking game. Cheers. While I enjoyed the film when it ended, I was actually really frustrated while I was watching it because of its incredibly disjointed nature. Since the story is so nonlinear, it was very difficult to keep track of all the information that was given, and hard to tell what was actually relevant to the plot. The audience at my screening was also not as forgiving as me because I saw a few people walk out. While B. Gunn definitely succeeds in making this film feel like a dream, the pacing is incredibly slow, and we hold on lots of shots that seem longer than necessary. Watching Wildcat's mom dance DDR seems fun in theory, but an unbroken behind-the-back shot seems meaningless after it's over. And down. And up. And down. While the pacing is consistent throughout the whole film, the two hour plus running time can definitely be felt. Oh jeez, I'm gonna regret this tomorrow. The main character, Luo, is not very likable, so it makes it hard to want to take this long journey with him. He's incredibly brash and a little too physical with women, so it made me wonder why people wanted to be around him. Uh, hey, Oh. Ah, can do this. As impressive as it is, the hour-long camera take definitely has some issues. There are many moments where we're just following the characters from behind and no longer gaining any new information from the shot.
When you're having a long camera take, you shouldn't want to divert our eyes from the screen so we don't miss anything. But here, there are way too many instances of just feet going up the stairs. Ugh. I understand the town setting added walking distance to different destinations, but unfortunately in cases like this, it just bloats the runtime. While I did mention I liked the use of 3D in this film, it was way too dark for me while I was watching it in my theater. Now that I've seen how vibrant everything looks without the 3D, I think I might prefer it over the lucid dream feel of what I first saw. Ugh. Time to tally up the drinking score. As you can see, I've had 19 drinks. Despite the negatives, I came out of Long Day's Journey into Night really wanting to understand what I had just watched. I had a similar feeling after I saw David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. I'm in this dream place. With both, I feel it was given enough pieces of the puzzle, but I had to just look a little closer to form the whole picture. Silencio. I was also getting a Silent Hill vibe from the story, since we have a man who goes to a town looking for lost love, and we get to experience his slow descent into darkness for answers. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. Now I'm going to discuss the film in more detail and give some of my thoughts and explanations as to what I thought was going on. Because the story is told out of order, I'm going to try and put it together chronologically and add some explanations along the way. Spoilers ahead and apologies if I mispronounce these characters' names. Lil Hong Wu has a friend named Wildcat who always has gambling debts and was going to sell some apples to a man named Zuo Hong Yeon. Wildcat hid a gun in the apples and Luo was supposed to help him bring them to Zuo. Because Luo was distracted by his divorce, he never brought the apples and Wildcat is found dead at the bottom of a mine shaft. Later, when Luo looks through the now rotten apples, he finds Wildcat's hidden gun. Luo goes looking for Zuo who is no longer in Kali but he finds his lover, Wan Chiwen, alone on a train. Luo tells Wan that she reminded him of his mother and shows her a photograph. He says her makeup on the train was also smeared like his mother's in the picture. This photo is the one that Luo finds behind the clock when he goes back home after his father's death. Luo must have given it to Wan at some point in the movie that we never see. Wan then visits her friend, Tai Zhao Mei, in prison and asks if the picture looks like her. She gives the picture to Tai, who finds out it was taken at Luo's father's restaurant. She mails the picture there, and is placed on the back of the clock with Tai's prison information written on it. Luo wants to make it up to Wan for scaring her on the train, and she tells him that she wants to eat a pomelo fruit. She says that if she can find one, he can help make her wish come true. We then see Wan eating the fruit while they're watching a movie. We hear gunshots from the film, and she begins crying as the music plays. A possible interpretation is that they're watching the moment of Luo shooting Zuo Hong Yeon in the movie theater. You'll notice during the whole movie that Luo never once fires his gun. The only time that this would have happened is when he was sitting behind Zuo, but we never see the outcome. The music we hear as they watch the movie is also the music that plays at the end credits of this film. Is she crying because her wish came true? Wan reveals to Luo that she was pregnant with a boy and that he would grow up to be an athlete. Luo says he'll teach her kid to play ping pong, but Wan says that she actually had an abortion because Zuo is coming back to Kali. Luo says that they should leave together and that he has a friend who runs a casino in Burma. He tells her to spend the night packing and then they'll go. Later we learn that Luo did go on to become a manager at this casino, but Wan never went with him. 
In a brief visually obstructed scene, we see two people fighting in the backseat of a car that's going through a car wash. The only thing that we can make out is a white hat on the dashboard. This is probably when Zuo Hong Yan captures Luo. At his headquarters, Zuo serenades Luo and Wan with a karaoke song while Luo is tied up. The lyrics of the song he's singing, I know you are leaving me, but I cannot stop the tears from falling down, match the tone of Luo's search for Wan during the course of the movie. Luo and Wan somehow manage to escape and Wan comes up with a plan. She wants Luo to follow Zuo to a theater and sit behind him with a gun. He could then shoot along with the gunshots happening during the screening, and people would think it's the sound effects from the film. After Luo kills Zuo, he returns to the house to find that Wan is gone. All he finds is the green book she left, and he memorizes the spell on the first page that makes the house spin. Earlier we saw that Wan was walking on top of a wall, and she kicks the green book out of her way. This possibly implies that she was no longer interested in spells since Luo was going to make her wish come true. Luo's father passes away, so he goes back to his hometown of Kali. At his father's restaurant, he finds a photo behind the clock. We now know that Tai mailed the photo there from prison. This photo reminds him of Wan, and he decides to go looking for her after all these years. With help from a friend, he finds out that the number on the photo is from a prison in another town. He visits a prisoner named Tai Zhou Mei, asking if she knows Wan Chi Wen, and shows her the picture that he takes out of the green book. It's here we learn that a man called Mr. Ace tricked Tai and Wan into going to Kali. Mr. Ace is most likely Zuo Hong Yan, as we see an Ace of Spades card on the ground when Wildcat's body is being pushed into a mine. She also tells Luo that Wan must have given him the book because she was saving it for the person she liked most. Luo says he doesn't know where Wan is and that he'd like to give the book to Tai now. As he's leaving, Tai gives him another name to follow and our detective journey continues. Luo gets more information and it leads him to a hotel in a different city. As Luo is driving to the hotel, he's passed by a truck that has a large image of a lady and a tiger on the back. This is a famous story that has no ending. In The Lady or the Tiger, we don't know if the princess helped her lover choose between being with another woman or his own death by a tiger. Similar to how this movie is presented to us, it feels like we'll never get to find out if Luo sees Juan again or ends up all alone. When Luo arrives at the hotel, we see the manager holding a fake gun to the back of the head of his sleeping attendant. This mirror is what Luo has done previously when he shot Zuo in the theater. We find out from the manager that Wan Chi Wen stayed at the hotel and the two of them later married because she had no money. The two eventually got a divorce and she never returned. He tells Luo that he found out that she sings at a bar in another town. It's here we're reminded that Wan potentially uses men and when they're no longer needed, she vanishes from their lives. Luo decides to see Wildcat's mother while on the way to the bar. He tells her how his mom used to steal honey from the beekeeper next door by using a smoking torch to disperse the bees. Luo reveals that he and Wildcat once snuck out to meet Wildcat's father, who had the nickname The Eagle. If you look closely at Wildcat in the scene where he's eating the apple, you can see this tattooed on his chest. Wildcat's mother is dyeing her hair and asks Luo to guess what color. He says red because it's what his mother might have picked. Luo goes to the bar where Wan might be performing, but finds out that it's the last night it's going to be open since it'll be torn down the next day. He asks a woman if Wan Chi Wen works there, and she replies that he'll have to come back later and find out. She says they'll be open in an hour, and that he should watch a movie while he waits. Luo decides to take her advice and watches a 3D film, but falls asleep in the theater. Coincidentally, the dream sequence that happens next is also an hour long and the movie he's watching is called Long Day's Journey Into Night. Luo finds himself in a mine after waking up in the theater with no lights on. He searches around until he finds a boy locked in the cabinet and lets him out. Luo burns a picture of his mother as he feels he'll never find Wan Chi Wen since tonight is his last chance to see her and he's stuck in the mine. The boy agrees to help him out if he can beat him at a game of ping pong. This is a callback to Luo telling Wan that he'd teach her son to play the sport earlier in the film. The boy leads Luo out of the mine on a motorbike and to a cable lift that goes down into the town. 
Before he takes the lift, the boy gives him his ping pong paddle, saying that he can use it to fly. We can hear music in the background of the wild Pamelo karaoke competition going on, where one of the singers selected could potentially become a superstar. Luo finds himself in a pool hall where he meets a woman named Kai Zhen, who's played by the same actress as Wan Chi Wen. This new character is most likely Luo's manifestation of his desire to find Wan. Her look is the mirror opposite, however, complete with short hair and a bright red jacket. She insists that she isn't the woman he's looking for. The two of them become locked in the pool hall, so they decide to play a game. She says that she'll leave the town if she wins a pomelo fruit on the game machine, which she actually does earlier. This is not the third time the fruit is mentioned in the movie, so it's like the character really did win the slot machine game. There's also mention of fruit before the dream sequence when Luo is talking to a hostess of the bar. She says if you buy one song, you get a fruit plate. If you buy three songs, you get a girl. So technically, three fruits means he gets a girl, and in his mind, he's probably hoping it's Wan Chi Wen. Luo decides to use the ping pong paddle as a way to get out, and after he spins it, the two fly above the town, looking down at the karaoke competition. Kai Zhen says that flying must feel like being in a house that spins. They land, and a horse carrying apples runs away with its owner, a call back to Wildcat's story where he hit a gun with some apples. Luo asks Kai Zhen to sing him a song, but she tells him to go away as she goes towards the town square where the karaoke competition is being held. While there, a woman lights a torch and Luo follows her down to where she has an argument with a man who has a truck. We have another visual callback as the honeycomb shape of the fence matches the dividers of the prison call room where Luo first speaks to Tai. Luo helps the woman with the torch leave with the man, but takes her watch before they go. This woman is played by the same actress as Wildcat's mother. Here, I believe she actually represents Luo's mother as she's carrying a torch and has the red hair color he believed his mother would choose. The torch is a reference to how she would get rid of bees when trying to steal honey from the neighbor. The man in the truck says she already burnt down his house to threaten him. She wants to go with him because she's tasted too much bitterness and he can offer her sweet honey. Luo asks if there's anything that's keeping her and she says that he's too young to remember. What they may be implying here is that Luo's mother left him and his father to be with their neighbor, the beekeeper. When Luo makes his revelation in his dream, he begins crying and starts to eat the apple, core and all, based on what his mother once told him that people do when they are very sad. Wildcat is also shown doing this right before he dies, earlier in the movie. Luo goes to the town square and finds Kai Zhen backstage preparing to sing a song. He gives her the watch he just stole, and she says they are a symbol of eternity. But the watch is broken, meaning that there's no such thing. She gives him fireworks in return, and he says they're the symbol of the transitory, something that isn't permanent, basically reiterating their current relationship. She then decides to bring him to the house that spins while they wait for her song to come on. We learn about the history of the house through multiple dialogues in the movie. When Wan Chi Wen and Tai Jo Mei were 15 or 16, they broke into a couple's house. Wan tells her that the couple's house can spin, so they sit and wait, but nothing happens. The couple comes home, and they run out. Wan stole a green book that contains a love story, and says she'll give it to the person she likes the most. In this dream sequence, it seems that the house belongs to Luo's neighbor, the beekeeper. Kai Zhen describes there being jars of honey on the table, most likely the honey that his mother would get from him. She tells Tai the story of the house spinning because she overhears a man telling a woman that if you recite a spell, the house would begin to spin. Since the house belonged to the beekeeper, he is telling the story to Luo's mother. Kai Zhen also comments on how everything is now burnt when they arrive at the house, most likely from the woman earlier holding the torch. The two sit down on the bed, and Luo asks if he can kiss her. She says that if the house spins, then he can. Luo recites the poem he memorized from the green book, and the house begins to rotate around them. As Luo kisses Kai Zhen in this moment, the camera returns back to the fireworks that they lit earlier still sparking. In Luo's mind, this is probably signifying that things aren't finished just yet, as the fireworks still has a little more time to burn. While this is technically the end of the dream, and the entire movie itself, if you look again at the opening shot, you'll see a woman wearing a watch and holding a microphone before Luo wakes up. And so the end of his dream loops back to the beginning of his journey. 
a nameless woman talks to Luo, and he tells her he was dreaming of someone who disappeared. He says that whenever he's about to forget her, he dreams of her again, maybe implying his journey to find Wan Chi Wen will never end. Well, that's it for Only Nice Things. I hope you enjoyed the explanation. Thanks for watching, and come drink with me next time. <sighs> done. I'm done. Too much alcohol.